eyes may fall, my love, but I will still be true. Graffiti today is such an accepted part of youth culture that it's hard to imagine what New Yorkers experienced in the early 70s as they watched their city become steadily tattooed with hieroglyphics. Some saw it as vandalism and a symbol of urban decay, but for the writers who risked life and the teenagers, filmmakers and eventually curators who admired them, graffiti was an art form. Graffiti began in the USA in 1960s, however it's recorded that it began as early as 1930 with artists such as Cholo and Kilroy. Cholo emerged in the 1930s. He was Mexican-American and began creating street art using spray paint. This movement was occurring in East Los Angeles in the 1930s. Style underwent an evolution of style from Old English to prison style and was used to create roll calls of gang members. Current copies of the Cholo styles are artist Chaz Borges and tattoo artist Mr. Cartoon. The use of Old English lettering is noteworthy because within Mexican-American culture, this lettering is afforded a measure of authority and credibility. From late 1939 to early 1950s, the phrase Kilroy was here and also an accompanying big-nosed peekaboo-faced drawing sprung up all over the globe. There are many stories about the origin of the, fr of the phrase and drawing. The more credible accounts attribute their spread to American GIs during World War II. The phrase Kilroy was here was attributed to James J. Kilroy in 1946. There are many forms of graffiti. There are different styles such as tagging, blockbuster, wild style, throw ups and bubble letters. It has been said that the birthplace of graffiti is the United States of America and began in Philadelphia. Two people by the name of Cornbread and Cool Earl are said to be the founders of graffiti during the 1960s. They wrote their names all over the city, gaining attention from the community and local press. Graffiti first gained popularity in New York and began by tagging, by simply writing a name on street signs. As gangs gave, gained tainted names in the USA, they began to use graffiti to mark their territory. However, eventually, graffiti would grow to become a modern form of art. Graffiti would soon inspire young people to use it as a way of expression through freedom of speech regardless of the form. In the late 1960s, Cornbread and Cool Earl founded Modern Graffiti. It was their way of getting attention from girls. They did this by writing their names all over the city and soon gaining attention from the community and press. Graffiti then made its own way to New York around the 1970s where artists such as Taki183, Julio 204 and Frank 207 and Joe 136 popularized it. Taki 183, whose real name was Demetrius, was employed as a foot messenger and took advantage of riding the subways. The subway was a place for Taki 183 to practice his tagging skills. Taki was the nickname Demetrius chose for himself and 183 was the name of the street he resided on. Taki 183 got this idea of tagging from Julia 204. Julia 204 was a Puerto Rican who was from a gang known as Savage Skulls. Taki 183 began tagging his name in his neighborhood as early as 1968. Graffiti evolves to trains before the first whole train. The Freedom Train was painted on 1967 by Kane, Mad 103 and Flame 1. The whole car was considered by by most to be the most superior form of graffiti that could be achieved. The Freedom Train's life was short-lived. It was taken out of regular service and repainted one day after it was painted. Lee of the Fabulous Five crew suggested that this move by the authorities was stupid. They did something for the United States and somebody informed the authorities about the Fabulous Five. Like the world train, born sinner, the opposite of a winner. Remember when I used to eat sardines for dinner? Peace to Raw D, Brucey B, Kick and Free. Fuck Master Flex, Love Bug Star Schemes. I'm blowing up like you thought I would. Call a crib, same number, same hood. It's all good. Uh. And if you don't know, now you know, nigga. Uh. I made the change from a common thief to up 
close and personal with Robin Leach And I'm far from cheap, I smoke soap with my peeps all day Spread love, it's the Brooklyn way The Moet and Alize keep me pissy Girls used to diss me, now they write letters cause they miss me I never thought it could happen, it's rapping stuff I was too used to packing gats and stuff Now honey's... 1990 to 2000 So it's seen from the earlier years, graffiti's becoming part of our everyday and now becoming an art in the early 1990s, graffiti began to link up with hip-hop fashion. Graffiti culture is a subunit of hip-hop culture, but both equally influence the other. Graffiti can be considered as a rebellious art, a form of expression that violated the norms of society and outcry to social injustice that surround us. Graffiti has blurred the lines between vandalism and pure art, but who is to say what is or isn't art? Art is a form of expression upon any surface that is created and maintained by an individual. Graffiti, an art form that was not recognised as art until more recent years has made its mark on the fashion world. Banksy is an anonymous British graffiti art artist, political activist, film director and painter. Known for his concept for the government in labelling graffiti as vandalism, Banksy displays his art on public surfaces such as walls and even going as far as, far as to build physical pop pieces. Banksy does not sell photos of street graffiti directly himself, however art auctions have been known to attempt to sell his street art on location and leave the problem of its removal in the hands of the winning bidder. He's perhaps the most famous or infamous artist alive, to some a genius, to others a vandal. Always controversial, he inspires admiration and provokes outrage in equal measure. Since Banksy made his name with his trademark stencil, Gorilla art in public places on walls in London, Brighton, Bristol, and even more on the West Bank barrier, separating Israelis and Palestinians. His works have sold for hundreds of, of thousands of pounds. He has dozens of celebrity collectors, including Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, and Christina Aguilera. The Israeli West Bank barrier is a barrier being constructed by the State of Israel. Its purpose is to separate Israel from the Palestinian territories. Banksy is a modern day graffiti artist from the UK city of Bristol. He condemned the wall but described it as the ultimate activity holiday destination for graffiti writers. In 2005, Banksy created nine powerful graffiti paintings on the Palestinian side of the barrier. This was Banksy expressing his way of trying to eliminate this wall through powerful visual images of graffiti. Chris Brown wanted to do something new that hadn't been done so far that would make his album unique and memorable for the world of music. He fascinated people with the album Graffiti. It's a strange phenomenon as the, graffiti, as the album is not entirely themed on matters relating to graffiti art, but he explains his music as an expressive art as graffiti is. Chris Brown has said he likes to paint in graffiti and has been having lessons with Australian artist Kid Soon who helped design the album cover for his forthcoming album. He states instead of graffiti out on the street and taking over walls, he tags on canvases. <laughs>